Hello everyone. Today in this presentation, I am going to discuss about the topic Embryonic Development in Drosophila. Before going to the topic, I would like to mention that this presentation is a part of the initiative taken by Geological Society of Assam. Now I have mentioned here learning outcomes that is the content of the presentation and after going through this presentation the students will learn the following first introduction about drosophila and its structure then why drosophila is used as a model organism next uh, life cycle of drosophila and its embryonic development then pattern regulating genes that are related to embryonic development and at last different mutation cases now coming to the first point that is introduction about drosophila here we will discuss about its classification and some of the characters now see the classification part drosophila belongs to the phylum arthropoda class insecta order diptera family drosophilidae genus drosophila and species melanogaster it is bilaterally symmetrical and body is divided into three parts head thorax and abdomen drosophila is commonly known as fruit flies and also regarded as a star of genetic resource now coming to its structure drosophila consists of a head three thoracic segments t1 to t3 and eight or nine abdominal segments a1 to a8 now see the diagram segment t1 this t1 segment carries a pair of legs segment t2 carries a pair of legs and a pair of wings T3 segment carries a pair of legs and a pair of halters. So, halter is a reduced and specialized hind wing which function as a balancing organ. Now, in this particular slide, we will discuss why Drosophila is used as a model organism. So, it is used as a model organism for a variety of reasons. And here I have mentioned few of those. First, it is small in size and has only four chromosomes. Second, it has short and simple reproductive cycle. Third, its development is external and it also helps us in determination of genetic basis. Again, it has whole genome sequenced and it is very easy and cheap to maintain in laboratory condition and also easy to manipulate and it produces a large number of offspring so due to all these reasons it is studied as a model organism now we will discuss about its life cycle so drosophila mainly display holometabolous method of development that is it undergo complete metamorphosis in drosophila Three distinct stages of their post-embryonic life cycle are larva, pupa and adult. See the diagram. There are three larval stages. First instar larva, second instar, then third instar larva, which takes about four days. After third instar larva, pupal stage starts. And at last, adult fly emerges from this pupal stage so this is the life cycle of drosophila now coming to the embryonic development part and under development we will start from fertilization so this is structure of drosophila egg here at first sperm enters the egg through this micropyle region which is a tunnel in the egg shell and the 
eggshell the egg has begun to specify axis by the time sperm enters the egg now after fertilization we will study about the cleavage pattern of the zygote with the help of this diagram in drosophila after fertilization there's diploid nuclei or the zygote undergo a series of nuclear division or karyokinesis after nuclear division a syncytium is formed that is a stage of multiple nuclei in a single cell now most of the nuclei here migrate towards the surface of the egg from the middle portion to form a monolayer called syncytial blastoderm and later plasma membrane encloses each nucleus and converting the syncytial blastoderm into cellular blastoderm or embryo now look at the diagram here mentioned a small set of nuclei present in this extreme end and these cells are called pole cells these pole cells are primordial germ cells that will give rise to egg and sperm later now the embryo will undergo axis formation and segmentation and finally will proceed to larval stage and there are three classes of pattern regulating genes are present which play an important role in axis formation and segmentation in drosophila from this slide we will start to discuss about all the pattern regulating genes that are involved in embryonic development so there are three main classes of pattern regulating genes number one maternal effect genes and this maternal effect genes are involved in axis formation that is anterior posterior axis or dorsal ventral axis number two segmentation genes this segmentation genes are involved in segment formation and it has three types gap genes pair roll genes and segment polarity genes number three homeotic genes this homeotic genes are responsible for identifying or specifying its each segments here we will discuss about the first type of pattern regulating genes that is maternal effect genes this maternal effect genes are expressed during oogenesis by the mother prior to fertilization this maternal genes are responsible in determination of anterior posterior polarity and dors dorsal ventral polarity of the egg the product of this maternal genes are maternal mrnas and are produced by two type of cells nurse cells and follicle cells now we will study here maternal effect genes that are involved in the formation of anterior posterior axis so the product of four maternal effect genes are critical for the formation of the anterior posterior axis the product of two maternal genes that is bicoid and hunchback regulates the formation of anterior structures which includes head and thorax and the other two genes that is nanos and caudal for posterior structure formation which includes abdominal part now coming to the diagram see the bicoid morphogen first appears in the egg as mrna at the anterior end of the egg and after fertilization the mrna is translated into bicoid protein that diffuses towards the posterior end of the embryo and the mrna from nanos that transcribed during oogenesis is stored at the posterior end of the egg but after fertilization 
the posterior the nanos protein diffuses from posterior region so now see in this part both bicoid and nanos gradient is present and in the next slide we will discuss about its regulation now see the regulation part of anterior posterior axis as we know that bicoid is for anterior structure formation so it will so this bicoid protein will prevent the translation of caudal mrna in the anterior region while nanos protein inhibit the translation of hunchback at the posterior part and this inhibition results in opposing caudal and hunchback gradient now look at the diagram here the first one is before fertilization here bicoid is present at high amount at the anterior region and nanos at the posterior part but the amount of this hunchback and caudal mrna is present at equal concentration at both the side in oocyte now see the second one after fertilization or after translation of the mrna molecules the hunchback is present only at the anterior and caudal at posterior side because bicoid act as a transcriptional activator of the hunchback genes and hence make the level of this protein more at anterior region of the embryo and caudal is present with nanos at the posterior region now here is an another concept that is terminal genes this uh, this is a third type of maternal genes and proteins of these genes generates the extremes that is terminal of anterior end which is known as acron and terminal of posterior end called telson now see the image this is the anterior end and the acron and the acron is the most anterior part of the head and telson is the and telson is the most posterior abdominal segments so for acron formation torso proteins are responsible and for anterior structure that is head and thorax bicoid and hunchback are responsible and for posterior structure formation that is the abdomen caudal and nanos genes are responsible now here is a fourth set of maternal genes which defines dorso dorsal and ventral axis so see here the gurken and torpedo the gurken and torpedo is responsible for formation of dorsal follicle cells or dorsal fate and dorsal and pi protein is responsible for ventral fate development so maternal deficiencies of either gurken or torpedo cause ventralization of embryo and remember that gurken is active only in oocyte and torpedo is active in follicle cells and the uh, deficiencies of dorsal genes also result in development of dorsal fate now the regulation of dorsal ventral axis as we know gurken and torpedo this gurken and torpedo is mainly responsible for dorsal fate so they will inhibit the pipe gene at the dorsal side hence this pipe gene is only made in ventral follicle cells again dorsal protein which is for ventral fate is present with another protein cactus so when cactus phosphorylated it releases dorsal protein to enter the nucleus of the cell and cause ventralization of the embryo 
In this slide, let's start the second type of pattern regulating gene that is segmentation gene. This gene are responsible for segment formation in Drosophila. These are zygotic effect genes and express after fertilization. This segmentation gene defines number, polarity and size of the segment. There are three classes of segmentation gene that is gap gene, payroll gene and segment polarity gene. As we can observe in the diagram that the gap gene divides the embryo into broad regions and payroll gene divides the embryo into stripes and segment, pol segment polarity genes divide segments into anterior and posterior half. Here we, um, we are going to start the first type of segmentation gene that is gap genes. As we know this gene divide the embryo into broad regions and are so named because mutation of this gene result in gap in the, gap in the embryo segmentation pattern. And uh, another important thing is that all the gap gene protein are transcription factor transcription factor in addition to Hunsback four other gap genes are Gruppel, Krebs, Giant, Tailless and all these genes are expressed as a discrete band in the embryo. Now coming to the regulation part of the gap genes so the Transcription of the gap gene in the nuclei of the embryo is regulated by maternal effect genes. So the high level of hunchback and bicoid, the high level of hunchback induce the expression of anterior gap gene that is giant. While well, seeing the figure, Kruppel appears when level of Hunsback declines. Again high level of caudal at the posterior side is responsible for abdominal gap gene that is Krebs and Giant. Here is the second type of segmentation gene that is payroll gene. The protein product of the gap gene activate the transcription of payroll genes and the mutation of this gene usually delayed portion of alternate segments. This gene results in the appearance of series of stripes. These genes mainly include hairy, even skipped, runt, fussy terrazzo, odd skipped, paired, sloppy paired and odd paired. Now regulation of payroll genes, different concentration of gap protein determines the transcription of payroll genes. Again even, again, even skip stripe is controlled by a region that is activated by bicoid and Hunsback and replaced by both giant and Krippel protein and the anterior and posterior border is maintained by influence from giant and Krippel respectively. Now the third type of segmentation gene that is segment polarity gene. In this case the payroll gene proteins activate the transcription of these genes. This genes divides the embryo into 14 segments and provide greater definition to the stripes. This genes includes wingless, cubitus interruptus, patch, engrailed, hedgehog and armadillo. Here is the regulation of segment polarity genes. So the expression of wingless and engrailed is initiated by payroll genes. 
Now see the diagram, the high amount of even skipped or fusiterazoprotein is responsible for ingrilled gene expression in cells and ingrilled is repressed by high level of odd skipped, runt and sloppy paired. Again, the wingless is transcribed in absence of even skipped and fusiterazo genes. Here is the third type of pattern regulating genes that is homeotic selector genes. These genes determine the identities of segments by the end of cellular blastoda. Here I have mentioned two major homeotic genes. First antenna pedia complex which controls the development of head and thorax, head and anterior thorax. Second bithorax complex which control the development of posterior thorax and abdomen. Now see the image. Genes in the antinapedia complex includes labial, proboscipedia, deformado, comba sexual reducida, antinapedia. Whereas genes in the bithorax complex include ultra bithorax, abdominal A and B. So this all are the homeotic genes. The homeotic genes contain a conserved DNA sequence of 180 base pair known as homeobox. And this sequence encodes the 60 amino acid homeodomain. So you can clearly understand about all the homeotic genes with this diagram. Here in this diagram all the genes are clearly mentioned. Now coming to the regulation of homeotic genes, here the gap gene and payroll gene interact to regulate the homeotic genes. At first, the antenna pedia genes are activated by hunchback genes and the expression of abdominal A and B are repressed by the gap gene proteins that is hunchback and Kruppel. And also prevent this abdomen specifying gene to express in the head and thorax. So this is all about regulation part. Here in this particular slide I have mentioned all the three classes of pattern regulating genes with their types that we can that we have already studied before. So if you want you can go through it. Now mutation cases. So first case that is if bicoid deficient or mutated. So in this case there will be no head and thorax formation or lack of anterior structure because bicoid is important for anterior structure formation. Second if nanos deficient or mutated. As we know that nanos is responsible for posterior structure formation. So in this case, there will be no abdomen formation. Third case, if torso deficient or mutated. As we know, torso is for the formation of extremities, that is acron and telson. So here in this case of torso mutation, no extremities, that is no extreme structure will form. Fourth case, if mutated antinapedia genes. This mutation results in legs growth on head regions in the place of antenna. Fifth case if mutated ultra bithorax genes. Due to this mutation, there will be no legs and halters. Sixth case if mutated gap genes. As we already discussed, gaps in mutation results in loss of body segments. Seventh case if in case of dorsal mutation as dorsal gene is for ventral fate formation so due to its mutation there will be no ventral reason. At last uh, in case of mut uh, mutated gurkhan and torpedo uh, this results in absence of dorsal reason. This is all about mutation. Now in this particular slide, we will discuss one mutation case in details. 
that is if bicoid deficient or mutated so in case of wild type embryo all the body parts will remain in its normal position that is from acron to telson all present in sequence from anterior to posterior but in case of bicoid mutation this bicoid mutation see what happens as we know bicoid is for head and thorax formation that is anterior structure hence in absence of this bicoid there will be no anterior structure that is lack of head and thorax region now if we if bicoid mrna is injected in anterior end of this mutant then embryo development will becomes normal again second case we will discuss here if nanos deficient or mutated so as we discussed earlier this is the wild type embryo with its normal positioning of all the structure so here if nanos become mutated then it result in lack of abdomen lack of abdomen because nanos is for abdominal reason form ab, uh, abdominal reason formation third case if uh, torso deficient or mutated again this one is wild type embryo and this one is the mutated one with loss of extreme structure because torso is responsible for extreme structure formation so here i have mentioned some of the suggested reading and references that you can use for your further study of this particular topic and in case of any query and doubt regarding the topic you can contact me in this email id thank you for your kind attention